Hello and welcome. Uh, another video on the uh, V drive. Uh, just thought today that I would uh, give you a little bit more of a real time feel, if you like. Uh, it was noted in my last video that I did uh, that, you know, the jump cuts might not have been such a, a good idea. You know, I, I didn't really want people to be sitting through the potential uh, long access times of the drives here. But if you want a more of a real time look and feel, uh, you know, stick around. Anyway, let's get into it here. I thought I would uh, do things like format a, a real cartridge here, maybe do some timing to see how long it takes to format a cartridge on a real on the real hardware. There's a real micro drive there. And also compare that with the time it takes to format a virtual uh, image on the V drive here. The V drives are available from V Retro Design uh, here in New Zealand. A uh, fellow Kiwi designed them and has done a very good job of uh, making a hardware emulated version of the real micro drive here for the Sinclair Spectrum and available for the QL as well. Uh, take a look at the website, I'll link it in down below. So what we've got here is a bog standard 48k Spectrum with a bog standard interface one connected, hooked up to a TV. And you'll notice if you've seen the last video that when I demonstrated um, Jetpack, I think it was, it was in black and white. And yes, my TV had just gone slightly out of tune. I'm using the RF cable here today. Here we go, here's a, a closer look at the uh, micro drives and bits and pieces here. We've got the specy. We've got the interface one there on the back uh, attached to the expansion slot on the back there and here's a close look at the micro drive the v drive so you can see uh, it's in, a, in an original case here and you can see down in the guts of the unit there sorry camera's having a bit of trouble there's the original there with the tape head you can see in the back there and i've got the v drive here Oh, solid state drive, pretty handy. Care for your micro drive cartridges. I did mention in the previous video, there's a little pamphlet here, caring for your micro drive cartridge. Some pretty useful information there. If you'd like to pause and have a read of that. Pretty handy. This is what I was showing in the previous video, that little pad there. Uh, disintegrates and I've been replacing them with uh, new felt pads and I've increased the reliability of the drives reading these cartridges quite substantially so it's been a good little project. I have the cable here plugged into the side of the interface one. Uh, if you're not familiar with the interface one it is an add-on that plugs into the back of the spectrum and it gives you RS-232 capabilities networking so you can network multiple spectrums and a pass-through connector on the back here on the side there is your micro drive connection there i've got the v drive zx installed in an original micro drive case here you can buy a 3d printed case for it and i've just joined the two with the little adapter just like so just join the two drives up there just like the old days and you can what you can do is you can unscrew this plate here and uh, straddle the two drives here to hold them nice and tight there so they don't sort of bend around but i, I didn't bother doing that uh, they were just for this demonstration and then we've got the cable there and connect into the side of the interface one pretty neat pretty neat uh, the V drive, if I haven't already mentioned it, is, runs on a SD card, so very good for reliability. I'll just turn the spectrum on. Now, I don't have the card installed in the V drive here at the moment, and if I do that and hit run, enter, it will install the toolkit, and I showed that in the previous video. Uh, just in case you were uh, wondering, the previous video basically dealt with um, restoring the little pads here on the microdrive cartridges 
just to make them a little bit more reliable for reading here in, a, in an original drive. And then I also showed the uh, procedure that I was using to back up the information that was on some of my old cartridges to a virtual image on a V drive here. I won't go too far into the inner workings of all the commands and bits and pieces with the V drive. There's a very good video done by the Spectrum Show. I'm not quite sure exactly what episode it was, uh, but he shows off the V drive nicely there, uh, just with a few basic commands. So you can uh, take a look at that. But today I'm really just, uh, as I say, going for the look and feel of it, really. Okay, so we've got the toolkit installed here. Uh, so the commands in the toolkit are preceded by a full stop. Uh, so if we list volumes there, or list V drive, sorry. SD not present, put the card in there. And sometimes I notice that, you know, this light should actually go out when you install a, an SD card. And I'm wondering if this card may not quite be 100% compatible. I've got a little micro SD adapter here with the micro SD card, 8 gig. Just sometimes I notice that it won't go out like it did then. So t second time around, it light did go out. As I say, that could be a compatibility issue there. So if we list volumes there. Okay, I've got a, a volume, a V drive, sorry, mounted already. So this is uh, R-Type and Manic Miner, I think it is. It's a cartridge that I've got here. Just this one here, it's got R-Type and Manic Miner on it. I had a failure of uh, one of the R-Type files, so I can show you what happens when it fails to do a copy uh, from the physical drive. Before we start though, let's just remove that drive, RMDRV. Remove that drive. Uh, and the number of drives you want to remove, RMDRV1. That'll remove one drive. That's the only one there, so LV, no drives enabled. Okay, uh, before we go any further, I will format this cartridge here. Okay, if I put it into uh, the drive there, and if we, because we've got no drives enabled on the V drive here, you can have up to eight virtual micro drives here. And then, so w however many micro drives you've got assigned in the V drive, you add one and that's your cartridge, your physical drive here. Uh, so because I've got none, it should be cat, it should be cat one, it should be drive one. Yeah, it is. So it's drive one here. Just do a quick cat on that cartridge. I think I've got magnets on there. Yes, it's a capture of uh, magnets from a multi-face I won't go too far into what the multi-phase does at this stage, but uh, suffice it to say that you can, uh, you plug the multi-phase into the expansion slot and you load up your game from tape or, you know, micro drive maybe. And then you can halt the computer by pushing a button on the multi-phase. And that way you can then um, save the contents of the memory complete. And what it does is it writes out several files. So if I saved magnets, for instance, it breaks it up into these four files here. We'll do some timing here. I'm going to use my trusty HP 41CX here. Got a stopwatch on here. I'll just reset the timer. Okay, and we'll do a format command. I'll use the original format command, which is format M and then uh, the drive, and then give it a name with the appropriate syntax. Let's just call it blank. Okay, get the timer ready. I'll hit run stop as I hit enter here. And the familiar old black and white flashing bars there. Apparently the V drive is a little bit slower than a physical drive, uh, but that's 
taking into account that you know you've got a perfectly good working physical drive as well which is not always the case if you've got dodgy cartridges it could take a lot longer to format than uh, the slower v drive here apparently it's slower that's what i've heard okay 35 seconds uh, so let's see how long a catalog takes I think it depends on where the tape is positioned in the drive as well, if you know what I mean, where the tape is in the cartridge. Let's just cat one here, let's time this. So 35 seconds for a format. I think the speak is, uh, so that was about 10 seconds, I think I was just a bit slow there talking there 10 seconds for a catalog and you can see there's 96 uh, sectors available on the on that formatted cartridge there uh, we'll find out how many sectors we get on a 100% working drive when I format the V drive uh, so 35 seconds to format 10 to catalog approximately and if we compare that with a V drive Let's have a wee look. Um, so I want to uh, make DRV, let's make four drives. So that'll make four drives on the V drive here, leaving the physical micro drive as drive five. So if we list the V drives, you can see we've got four empty drives. I'll just list my files here. Test, I think I use that for um, testing in the previous video. Let's just go into that one, CD, test there. Let's mount that. Yeah, so when I mean mounting it, I mean loading it. So it's LD. So load microdrive one with test. Okay, and if we look at the volumes on that, we've got it mounted here. Okay, so let's uh, format that and I'll use the new syntax that you can use with the V drive. Uh, so full stop F, which is format, drive one, and then give it a name. We'll call it test two, and we'll time this, format. Ready, go. Okay, so last time was 35 seconds. And we've got no uh, potential for read and write errors, obviously, because this is a solid state drive and uh, media. Okay, 38, so ever so slightly slower, not by much though, three seconds slower. Okay, let's do the cat, cat one, ready, go, okay, 10 seconds last time, yep, about 10 seconds there too. So not, if these are slower, the V drives, than the original hardware, it's very, very slight, I would say, looking at those results. And we've got a, a 127 available. Uh, are they sectors? I can't quite remember now. I'll have to look up the manual. But um, let's say 127 blocks, as opposed to uh, this one here, which I think was 90-something, wasn't it? 96. So there's, you know, potentially a few bad... Uh, sectors if you like on on that drive. I'll show you what happens when you get a failure to copy uh, from the physical media to a V drive as a backup. Okay, okay, we've got a blank test cartridge here. I'll load the utilities. I've got a um, utility here, so CD uh, utils. Okay, and then we want to load, uh, I'll just list that. Uh, Demo 2 is the introduction cartridge. 
that comes with the uh, in the kit with the interface one, the micro drive, you get a cable and a set of cartridges. And it's got some demo software on there. Let's load that. So full stop LD. Uh, drive 2 will load it into and it's called demo 2. Okay, that's done. So if we list the V drives now, we've got that. Okay, so I want to load a file. If we just quickly cat to, oops, quickly cat to there. There's a copier program on the introductory disk that I've been using for copying the files. You've seen the previous video uh, more in detail of that one. And so let's load that. Uh, shortcut load command is L. And then it's on disk 2 or drive 2. And the name, copier. Okay. It's a pretty handy utility actually. This program actually comes on the introduction disk here or a cartridge for the that'll be probably more than likely that came in a kit I would say with the interface one I saw one online actually it came in a kit interface one micro drive cable and this little uh, package software package here the copy program I'm using here comes on the introductory cartridge and it's pretty handy you can back up from physical uh, cartridge uh, from cassette, you know, to and from. So if we have a look at what's on this disc here, this is the R-Type and Manic Minor backup. We cat 5 here. It's got multi-face backups of those two games. And I had trouble with one of the R-Type uh, files so I think it's file 2 yep so you can see there's actually some corruption there you can see look at this little funny little character here just before the 3 and there's two uh, type 3's here so I'm not quite sure why uh, but more than likely you've got uh, dud media there of some sort I'll put uh, chapters in too down below on the timeline there. You'll be able to skip through. Some of this could take some time to uh, to get through. You know, I think it's failing on this one of these files down here. So when I do this copy, it's going to go through all these files potentially as long as they don't it doesn't fail here, and then it's going to bomb out probably on this R type two or three here. Then you, what you have to do is you have to start again. If you want to skip that file, you have to manually put in the command. I'll show you what I mean. But just yeah, bear in mind that I've got chapters down below if you want to skip through. So what we do is we use the move command. And it was uh, star move microdrive 5. And then if you want the entire contents, you just uh, don't put anything in between the quotes there. 2 micro drive oops uh, 1 wasn't it the test yeah test test drive okay it could take some time so let's say just skip ahead if you want uh, the reason I'm doing this sort of longer look and feel type video is because <laughs> the one and only comment I got on my previous video so far uh, he sort of pointed out that um, he would have liked to have seen the actual uh, length of time it takes for these operations to actually complete uh, and it's sort of mentioned historical purposes but I sort of just jump cut them really just to save time I didn't really want people sitting through uh, long you know uh, laborious uh, tasks like that and where not much was happening on the screen so anyway, uh, we're copying, it's reading the Manic M file, obviously. Uh, I guess it's reading it into the Spectrum's memory and then it dumps it out onto the cartridge that we've put in, that test cartridge that I just created, or, or formatted actually, earlier. It can take quite a while 
sometimes you think it's failing or you think it's going to fail but it doesn't eventually it'll do it and I'm not sure if it's just retrying it's going around and around on these continuous loop cartridges yeah so that's a failure right right off the bat I'm not sure if it's just retrying retrying because apparently these tapes take about 11 seconds to fully cycle and that's you know definitely longer than 11 seconds and then you'd need a bit of time for the reading operation uh, sometimes I've found that just repositioning the cartridge slightly can make a difference. Let's just uh, try a catalog again. So yeah, this could be a little bit uh, drawn out, this process. <laughs> now, so what I was saying before is, is if you wanted to back up this entire uh, drive here, all of these files, if you do, you know, the standard move command, where you've uh, just, you've got the empty quotes there, it's going to grab all the files. If it fails on the first one, you can't, you know, it won't skip it, it just bombs out and, and it won't read these remaining files. So that way, you know, you have to actually uh, physically you specify the file so you basically don't put in the one that's failing and then you just move to the next one and you specifically uh, you know type in the file name manic m and there's 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 characters for the file name 2 m microdrive 1 Right, so let's see if this works here. There we go, successful, read, and now it's writing. It's writing to the V drive, uh, drive one. Okay, and if we cat drive one, we'll see that manic M1 file sitting on the V drive here. Okay, that's good. Now let's have another go at doing all of the files again and see whether we get a success here. One. As I say, sometimes the second retry might get it, might not, sometimes just a slight reposition of the, there it goes, it worked. Sometimes just a slight reposition of the cartridge and the drive. Those pads that I've been making are quite thick. If you have a look in the previous video, these little pads here, quite thick and I wonder whether they're just pushing too hard into the drive sometimes just removing it just slightly so here we go it's going to try and write a file that's already been written to the to here and it says file exists and it skips and carries on it's a pity that it can't detect when there's an actual failure and instead of kicking you out giving you an option to proceed would have been quite a nice um, addition to this program this uh, copier program Yeah, so I just sort of kick one of the little, just the corner out of um, one of the drives here. Just slightly. You can't take it out too far, otherwise it stops driving the tape. You, obviously, uh, you get a complete failure then. But um, sometimes just a little bit of a jiggle position there seems to help. But uh, this R-Type, I've not been able to successfully get that one. Not in its entirety anyway. Yeah, sometimes it goes a lot longer than you expect for the reading and you, you think it's going to fail and you just walk away and come back and you might find it's done. <laughs> it's, uh, and then or other times it's kicked you out. But um, yeah, so we've got that problem there. 
if I continuously had issues reading this file here, I would just give up and then manually try and back these files up. I can show you the loading of, let's say, Manic Miner. Uh, will it work? What I could do is I think I've actually backed up Manic Miner onto a cartridge. I could write that out. What I could do is I could write the Manic Miner out to this cartridge here. And then we can have a wee look at um, how long it takes to load from a physical cartridge and how long it takes to load from the V drive here. So I'll go ahead and prepare that and we'll be right back soon. Okay, this is a an attempted backup of this cartridge, which has R-Type and Manic Miner on it, captured from a multi-face. And you can see that originally I I must have I failed to get R-Type 3 here, but I did manage to get uh, Manic Miner 1 and all the Manic Miners actually. This actually runs. What I'd like to do now is to create a new physical cartridge with this Manic Miner on it. Okay, so that's just a matter of running the move program. I've got the V drive set up here. Uh, this is our type Manic Miner, that's my backup, that's what's listed here. I've got the utils there for the copy program, and then we'll be copying from uh, the from drive one all the Manic Miners, these four files, to the micro drive, which means uh, I could just run the all files command and then maybe just crash out of it when it gets to R type. That's probably the quickest way. Otherwise, I'd have to um, put in the individual move files there, as you saw before. So let's load the copier program. I will jump cut things that you've already seen. I won't make you sit through all this. Okay, start, move, micro drive, uh, one, all files, two, micro drive, five. Okay. So reading from drive one here and writing to drive five, the physical media. And it's it's going to grab all of the Manic Miner files first because they happen to be first in the list. Uh, the R type files come later. It's based on uh, alphabetical. So hopefully we uh, get all of the Manic Miners on there and to save a little bit of time I'll just break out of the program when it starts the copy of the R type. I just did all files so that I didn't have to specify each one with that move command. And then we'll do a little timer test just to see uh, the differences in performance between the V drive and the physical drive, which I don't think there's much of a difference at all uh, when we load Manic Miner there. Okay, this is the last file on the set. Okay, and there it's going for the R type. I'll just break out of this. Okay, so now if we catalog five, the physical drive here, and we'll do some timing just to see what's quicker, if any. Okay, sorry about the background noise aircraft and birds and all the rest of it, you know. The only thing to consider with these multi-load programs is that if it was backed up, if this was saved 
onto a drive that was drive one uh, in this position here as a physical drive it can only be loaded from drive one so I have to either just disconnect and I'll connect this drive directly up uh, but we've got Manic Miner on drive one here if we cat one pretty sure we've got the Manic Miner on here as well so the first test I'll do is I'll load from the V drive here Manic Miner okay so let's do that first so we load star mic drive one uh, sorry syntax semicolon one semicolon manic m there okay let's time this okay So we're loading from drive one here, V drive. You can see that it was saved on a multi-face one two eight, which is uh, I've got one of those, and I've got a multi-face a multi-face one. There we go. Is that it? Twenty three seconds to get to that screen. Okay. Let's say twenty three seconds to get to where the screen loaded not where the music started okay just remove the power there and i'll just plug in the micro drive one here directly to the specy connect that back up there okay 23 seconds thereabouts maybe a little bit less was i quick enough i don't know uh we've got manic minor there Hopefully this will load, load, start, M1, Manic M, that's right isn't it, Manic M, are we ready for the timer here, go, okay, and the nice thing about the physical drive is we get a little bit of audio feedback, you can hear it. doesn't sound too bad does it uh, the thing with the V drivers uh, there I think you can get a little sound generator for them I know the QL version's got one I'm not sure about the V drive ZX but um, yeah it just gives a little bit of audio feedback oh it's 40 seconds taking longer I think it might be having trouble reading that's a minute <laughs> who said the V drives were slower I guess if you had perfect drives physical drives and perfect media um, there might be a comparison to be had there, I don't know, but this is not looking good. New minute 20. Okay. Might have media issues. I think I'll jump cut this to a result. I don't really want you sitting through this because we're up to two minutes now. Oh, there it goes. Two minutes twelve. <laughs> I'm not sure if that is because of a media issue. I'll try it with this one here, see whether we get a better result. OK. 
Okay, resetting there. Remove the disc or the cartridge. Let's try this one here. See if we get a different result there. Okay, 2 minutes 12 for the last one. Let's try this one. Not sure of the state of this media. Uh, you saw before that we did actually have trouble reading this second file on here, so it could be a little bit uh, flaky. You can see it's uh, been backed up with the Multiface 128, which so I've uh, got one of those, and I've got a Multiface 1 as well. Pretty handy devices, actually. 37 seconds. There, 40 seconds. Okay, so this disc, oh, this cartridge, sorry, I keep calling them discs. This cartridge uh, is obviously a bit dodgy. This one read in 41 seconds. Uh, what was the V drive? It was 30 something seconds, was it? Um, forgotten now, but 30 something seconds, 37, was it? You know, uh, it wasn't too sluggish, was it? Rightio, I, I think I'll uh, call that done, that video. I hope you found that uh, interesting and not too boring, uh, not too, uh, you know, didn't, hopefully it didn't drag on for too long. Why not play some Manic Miner while I've got it loaded, eh? Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh I knew as soon as I jumped. <laughs> Why not make the video even longer, eh? I think you can jump to that second platform there in one jump. Pixel perfect jump. Right, don't cock it up. Run. Come on. There you go. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.